Hey guys, in this video I'm talking about savant syndrome versus autism and three main differences that are super interesting. All that's coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan, I have autism, ADHD, OCD and dyslexia and I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you're new around here and you'd like to learn more, remember to hit that subscribe button by clicking the notification bell down below. And if you're watching over on Facebook, be sure to give this page a like and a follow to see more videos just like this one, boom. What's going on people? Welcome back to the Aspie world where we think differently daily. It's super good, it's super awesome to have you all here. Oh, my hands are clicking. Um, if you haven't already, guys, please check me out on Instagram and Twitter. I love reading my DMs and talking to you guys. So yeah, if you wanna reach out to me, I read every single one, so that right about now. But I wanted to do this video all about savant syndrome because um, I, I, a lot of people ask, like, what's the difference? Are savants autistic? You know, what's the difference between avant syndrome? Blah, 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 blah. So I wanted to do this video. But before I get started on the video, I just want to tell you that you can download my free autism life hacks, seven life hacks for daily living uh, PDF book for free. It'll be on the end slate, a card above here and in the description below. So you can download that book completely free, a little gift from me to you. So, savant syndrome. Now, everybody has probably uh, by this point seen Ray. Man. And Rain Man is a uh, is a savant. Uh, he's um, uh, a type of uh, condition, a neurological and mental health condition combined, comorbid, uh, that um, is of, of the nature, and they call that savant syndrome. Now, I wanted to deep dive into this because um, you know it, it's it's cat savant syndrome is categorized with autism, uh, but that but it isn't specifically autism, and autism isn't savant syndrome in a roundabout way. But we're going to get into that when I cover these um, these three main differences. So, what I wanted to do is show that there are differences between savant syndrome and autism because people there's some blurred lines there a lot of people when you say um you know my brother's autistic or, or, or i'm autistic or whatever they instantly think like oh like rain man from the, the tv you know the, the movie rain man and you're like uh yeah well no not really because rain man's like a savant but it's it, it has its place in the autism spectrum and um if i was to say like this you have like an autism spectrum like this right you have people who are who have like ADHD right over here, and then you have people all the way down here who have like savant syndrome. So there's there's a really big kind of broad spectrum, and this is what the autism spectrum is all about, and it's a beautiful, big, awesome spectrum, and I think that's amazing. So without further ado, we're gonna get into this right now. Okay guys, so number one, savant syndrome is actually super rare. Now, um, I've written down some notes here. So savant syndrome is an extremely rare condition, and in fact, uh, the, uh, it's so rare that there's fewer than 50 people in the world who are savants. There's fewer than that. I remember, I can off the top of my head, there's a guy called Daniel who lives in the UK. There's um, a pianist who I've met. Um, oh, I can't remember his name now. He's uh, he's also blind, and I met him. There is a guy called uh, Kim Peek. He died unfortunately, um, and he was called like the human Google. And um, there was another guy, um, a, a man of color, who was able to like draw out the entire map of London um, from an uh, from just flying around in a helicopter, and then he went back and made like a, a 360 kind of like picture of it. I don't know if you remember that. Anyway, so this is how rare this is. It's super, super rare. Uh, whereas autism, right? You think about this, autism uh, diagnosis impacts one in a hundred people in the UK and one in 60 in the US. So, you know, per hundred people in the UK, one of them has an autism spectrum disorder and per 60 in America, a uh, person has an autism spectrum disorder. When you take into consideration the entire population of the world, which is like what, six and a half, seven billion people, right? Or whatever, um, or maybe it's even more than that now. 50 savants in the whole world. Uh, so that's like, it's super, super rare. So savant syndrome actually is, is super rare, but autism isn't as rare uh, and is and is more way more common uh, than savant syndrome. So there you go, see, super different. Okay, so uh, number two is autism has narrow interest. Now, this is a really interesting one I wanna pick up on. Now, I've done videos all about like autism and obsessive interest, and I'll try and leave a link to a video above here and on the end slate for autism and, uh, you know, the, the obsessive interest kind of traits of autism. But uh, for instance, I just want to talk about this and I wanted to pick this up as a difference between autism and savant syndrome. It's very interesting. People with autism have a very narrow set of interests, right? Um, like, so you can like really, really home in on something. Like everybody knows what I'm talking about. If you're on the spectrum or you know somebody on the spectrum, uh, give this video a thumbs up if you relate to what I'm saying right now. 
If you are on the spectrum, then you know that you'll have a specific set of interests, like it could be, um, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine, or, or trains in general, or Pokemon, or Minecraft, or whatever it is, you know everything about it, and that's your main thing, and nothing really sways from that. One of mine is Fight Club, uh, I don't know if you could guess, but you know. Anyway, uh, whereas um, Savant Syndrome, on the other hand, um, they'll have one or two exceptionally amazing interests, like, like, exceptionally amazing. Like, the gentleman that I met when I was doing a keynote talk for an autism uh, conference, um, he came out and he played this just incredible incredible um, piece of music on a piano. He was just absolutely fantastic. Um, he, he absolutely just blew me away. And then I got home that night and I was just like watching videos of him playing piano because it was just amazing. I think his name was something like Richard something. I can't remember his name, goodness me. But um, he was so uh, famous that when his train broke down on the way here, uh, Richard Branson, uh, the guy who owns Virgin Trains, called for him to have a taxi drive him from wherever they were to the to the event, and that was kind of crazy. But yeah, he was really cool. But um, he was also blind; he had a co-occurring condition um, of, uh, you know, partially sighted blindness. I think he was completely blind actually. But yeah, very interesting. But uh, yeah, he had a very uh, extremely amazing interest, uh, and he had a couple of other interests as well. But it was really interesting knowing that. People with autism have very narrow interests. People with savant syndrome have kind of a broad spectrum. Uh, like, for instance, the guy Daniel from the UK, um, he actually has, uh, he's got a fascination with different things. Like, I think he holds the world record for saying the amount of numbers that come after pi, because he's a mathematician. I think he has like a degree in mathematics, I think, as well. Um, uh, but he also is, he loves maths, but he also really is fascinated with languages. And he's like exceptionally good at maths, but he's also exceptionally good at languages. And one of the most interesting things I found about this gentleman is that when he was um, explaining how maths work in his brain, he doesn't calculate things like we do. Our, our brain fires in a way where we're starting to compute and calculate things. Whereas Daniel, on the other hand, almost like the answers just came to him from nowhere. His brain didn't light up with any kind of cognitive behavior to say that, or neurological behavior to say that there was a calculation going on. He just knew. And he said that it was kind of like pictures and, they, on, and, and the, the numbers just fit together like, like jelly beans slotting together in like a weird jelly bean puzzle. It's a very interesting um, experience. And, and I, I don't really highly recommend everyone watching that. I can't remember his last name, but if you do know, drop it in the comments down below so everybody else can kind of get a feel for what I'm talking about here so I'm not just babbling on for ages. Okay, so number three is Savant Syndrome uh, and Mental Disabilities. Now, Savant Syndrome is uh, characterized uh, uh, with co-occurring mental health disabilities. Uh, you know, like, you know, you could have um, Savant Syndrome and then you could have intellectual disability. You could have Savant Syndrome and like selective mutism or, or, or a whole host of other mental health disabilities, whereas um, autism, uh, on the other hand, like autism is just neurological and most of the time has mental health dis disabilities co-occurring. So Savant syndrome is categorized because it is a mental health condition as well as neurological impairing. So it's hard to explain, but so autism is a neurological condition only, and then it has co-occurring mental health conditions, whereas um, Savant syndrome is kind of a fusion of like mental health um, intellectual disability with neurological development. So it's, it's kind of like fused together, whereas autism kind of separates out mental health to, from neurological conditions, which is fascinating. Um, I really feel like people with Savant syndrome are just so fascinating, and it absolutely lights me up when I see them doing like something amazing. I'm like, whoa, I wish I was that cool. Like, but yeah, very interesting. Please check them out, that's awesome. Okay, guys. Guys, that is the video. If you want to see more, remember to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.